In our last lab, we completed the dissection of a frog, which is an amphibian. Now we will turn our attention to an aquatic vertebrate, the perch. We will first examine the perch's external anatomy, and then we will study its internal anatomy. The perch is a common bony fish that lives in freshwater lakes and rivers. The average adult perch is about 7 to 10 inches, or 18 to 25 centimeters long. Let's measure our perch to see how long it is. From the front of its mouth to the tip of its tail, this perch is about 9 inches, or 23 centimeters long. Therefore, we can assume this is an adult perch. Many bony fish, such as this perch, have tiny overlapping scales covering their bodies. Notice what happens when we slide a probe along the lateral surface of the perch. When we slide the probe in this direction, it glides smoothly over the scales. But if we move in the opposite direction, the probe catches on the scales and some of them flake off. A fish's scales were designed to lay flat to provide a streamlined surface to help the fish glide through the water. Now, let's look at some other features of the perch's external anatomy. At the anterior end of the fish is its mouth. A bony fish uses its mouth to take in water for breathing and to take in food for eating. Behind the mouth, on the fish's dorsal surface, are two nares. A fish does not use its nares for breathing, but it does use them for its sense of smell. The perch has a well-developed sense of smell that allows it to detect minute particles or chemicals in the water. Posterior to the nares are the fish's eyes. The perch's eyes have been specially designed to help it see underwater. Posterior to the eyes is a skin-covered bony flap called the operculum. The operculum covers the opening to the gills to protect the gills and to aid the fish in respiration. Behind the operculum is a line that extends to the tail. This is the lateral line, which is a row of sensory receptors a fish uses to detect changes in pressure caused by the presence of other animals in the water. One of the most noticeable features of the external anatomy of a fish are its fins. A perch uses eight fins for movement and stability in the water. Some fins are movable, but others are fixed. The first fin we will examine is the pectoral fin, which is posterior to the operculum. A perch has two pectoral fins, one on each side. Pectoral fins are movable fins used for propulsion steering, and diving. On the dorsal side of the perch are two fixed fins called dorsal fins. When the fish is swimming, the dorsal fins help keep the fish upright in the water. The anterior dorsal fin has sharp, stiff spines, so it is also called the spiny dorsal fin. The spines are used for defense. The posterior dorsal fin does not have spines, since it is softer than the spiny dorsal fin, it is called the soft dorsal fin. The largest fin is the caudal fin, which is located at the tail of the fish. The caudal fin is a movable fin used for propulsion. On the ventral side of the perch, just anterior to the caudal fin, is a fixed fin called the anal fin. The anal fin is used for balance. Beneath the pectoral fins are two pelvic, or ventral fins. The pelvic fins are movable fins used for steering and diving. On the ventral side of the perch, anterior to the anal fin, are two small openings. This one is the anus, where solid waste is excreted from the fish's digestive system. The other opening, which is closer to the anal fin, is the urogenital opening. 
A perch uses its urogenital opening to excrete liquid waste from its bladder. A female perch also deposits eggs through the urogenital opening, and a male fish deposits milt. It is often too difficult to determine the gender of a preserved specimen until we look at the internal anatomy. Now, let's examine the internal anatomy of the perch. To see the internal anatomy of the perch, we must remove the skin, muscles, and bones from one of the lateral sides. Using the sharp scissors, we begin at the opening of the mouth and make a lateral incision along the ventral side of the fish between the pelvic fins and down to the anal fin. We need to keep the cut as shallow as possible to avoid damaging the internal organs. Now we make a transverse cut from the anal fin up to the posterior dorsal fin. The ribs of the fish curve around the lateral side of the fish, so we need to cut through them. However, the perch's bones are not extremely hard, so we can cut through them with the scissors. Next, we make another transverse incision, this time from under the operculum up to the anterior dorsal fin. We do not want to damage the gills when we make this cut, so we cut around the operculum, just posterior to the pectoral fin. Next, we make another lateral incision, this time just above the lateral line, back to the transverse incision we made earlier. Now that we have made our incisions, we lift up the skin, muscles, and bones that surround the body cavity. Notice that there is connective tissue still holding the skin, muscles, and bones to the underlying organs. We need to cut this connective tissue with our scalpel to release it. One final incision is needed to remove the operculum. With the operculum removed, we can examine the respiratory system. A bony fish takes in water through its mouth and uses its muscles to force the water through the gills to extract oxygen from the water. Then, the operculum opens to allow the water to exit the fish. A perch has four gills on each of its lateral sides. The gills are arranged in flat layers. Each gill is made of tiny gill filaments. Gill filaments contain thin membranes that allow oxygen from the water to pass through them into the gill capillaries and into the blood. Carbon dioxide from the fish's blood is released from the gill capillaries, through the gill filaments, and into the water. Each gill is supported by a curved bone called a gill arch. Extending from each gill arch is a set of bony projections called gill rakers. Gill rakers trap particles in the water that might damage the gills. Now, let's examine the reproductive digestive, and circulatory systems of the perch. Earlier, we said we were not certain whether this was a male or female perch, but now we are certain it is a female because we can see the ovary. The ovary is filled with thousands of eggs. If we open up the ovary, we can see some of the eggs. When eggs are released from the ovary, they pass through the oviduct and out through the urogenital opening. We need to remove the ovary so we can see some of the other internal organs. Near the top of the body cavity is the swim bladder. Right now, the swim bladder is deflated, but a live perch would inflate the swim bladder with oxygen from the gills to maintain buoyancy in the water. This large internal organ is the liver. The liver supplies digestive enzymes and hormones to regulate metabolic processes. Beneath the liver is a dark sac. This is the gallbladder. The gallbladder stores digestive enzymes from the liver until the digestive system is ready to use them. A perch swallows its food whole. The food travels down the short esophagus into the stomach, where mechanical and chemical digestion take place. Attached to the stomach are several finger-like projections. 
Each of these is a digestive cecum, which provides digestive enzymes to aid in chemical digestion. Digested food passes into the rather short intestine. Nutrients pass through the walls of the intestine into the perch's blood. A perch does not have a large intestine, so undigested waste passes out of the intestine and is excreted through the anus. Right behind the gills is the perch's heart. A bony fish has a two-chambered heart, but the two chambers are difficult to distinguish. During this dissection, we discovered that the perch was created with several specific features that help it survive in its aquatic environment. In our next lab, we will look at another aquatic animal, the sea star. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs>